Jennifer, you're right. The training was intense. We did things that I never dreamed I would do to prepare to become an astronaut. I guess one of the toughest things for me was when they took me in to learn how to use the toilet. And as we were going through all the technical aspects of the toilet, somebody said, hey, you're gonna need to practice this. And I said, well, what do you mean practice this? Well, actually you come in here after hours and you have to actually go to the bathroom. Well, when I asked people who was gonna clean up my mess, they said, oh, we have people, employees here at the Johnson Space Center who do that sort of thing. It was at that point that I decided I was gonna do my first pooing when I was living in space. I was not gonna come in after hours and I was not gonna dirty up this facility so that someone else had to clean up my mess. So I guess that's one of my gotcha moments for training that I never really thought I would think. Some astronauts come home from space and the fluid shift due to the lack of gravity on board the space station has caused problems with their optic nerve. So much so that they have degre degraded eye capability when they come home. Fortunately, I didn't have any of that. Now, there may be stuff going on inside my body that I don't know about yet, but overall I came back very, very healthy. The first 24 hours were the toughest. I was weighing 200 pounds again after being weightless for all that time in space, so it was hard to learn to walk. It was hard to learn to shave. I had to actually lift up my hand and hold the razor and let it drag down my face. But over 24 hours later, I was pretty much back to normal. I went to rehabilitation for two and a half hours every single day for three weeks, and then the doctor said, hey dude, you are ready to go. You're back to your earthly form. So we continue to evaluate bodies of astronauts in space and when they come home looking at things like how their he uh, heart works, how their blood pressure system operates, what's going on with their optic nerve and many many other experiments so that we can help benefit astronauts in space but more importantly than that perhaps we'll learn things that will benefit people here on earth. Oh man uh, let's see Nikki the there are so many wonderful places to eat in Houston, Texas. I mean, and this is a vast city with all sorts of diversity and, and the, every flavor you can imagine. Of course, we love our Tex-Mex. One of our favorite places is down here in League City called Mr. Sombrero's. But if I really want a great steak and a great atmosphere and a great place to eat, I like to choose either True Lux Steakhouse and Seafood or Tony Mandola's. Check out those places, and then, of course, for some good, fun barbecue, hit T-Bone Tom's down in Kima. All awesome. Cricket, that's a really good question. As a five-time, five-month flyer in space on the International Space Station, I had the opportunity to eat both Russian and American food. I am very partial to Russian. Way more fat content, way more salt, which means way more taste. Now, when I was a shuttle crew member, before I got to the space station, I ate American food, all that dehydrated stuff, all the warm it in a packet like a meal ready to eat that the Army guys use. And that stuff gave me gas, really bad gas. So when I went over and began to live on the station and ate only Russian food or mostly Russian food, I was regular as clockwork and the gas went away until it was time to go back to Earth and I had to eat American food for two more days and what came back? The gas. I don't know if that's me, or I don't know if that's the food, but if I'm eating space lettuce, I think I'm looking for a hamburger with some cheese and a bun and some ketchup and mustard to make me a nice cheeseburger with lettuce.